about Nicola Sturgeon. I want yeah. to talk about Nicola Everyone Sturgeon. Everyone wants to talk about Nicola Sturgeon. Because she was morning, photographed you? back at home yesterday yep. for the first time. She lives in, in a suburb of Glasgow. She's back to work this week in the Scottish yes. Parliament. She said she's innocent of all charges. But she is, it is an historic position, is it? Another Scottish First Minister arrested and yeah. interviewed under caution by seven the police hours. as a suspect. For but seven actually, hours. Yes. you know, Sturgeon is a master communicator or mistress communicator. And she chose her words very carefully yesterday. She said that she had done nothing wrong. She didn't say she hadn't done anything illegal. Now, if she's setting up her defence, which is what I think she was doing yesterday, many people who commit crimes um, would say, I've done nothing wrong. And the law is an ass. Yes, I see and, what you mean. And <clears throat> I thought very carefully. I mean, she thought about every single word. She made a statement, no questions left. And if you look at every word, that's the key with her. It's what she didn't say. And mm. she didn't say, I'm innocent of all charges. She didn't say, I have not broken the law. She said, I have done nothing wrong. She kept, she said it more than I once. know she I did, have yes. done nothing wrong. But you see, that's different. Yeah. So I think it's the beginning of setting up her defence. She said she's going back to Parliament this week and will be available for more questions. But she, she I mean, that in itself is ridiculous because she won't answer any of no. them. And on top of that, at the weekend, the most sensational claims have now come from a whistleblower, which the police have acknowledged they're in, in, uh, investigating, about a businessman in Scotland handing senior SNP members cash in envelopes to the tune of tens of thousands mm. of pounds. And this man is related to a senior SNP figure. Now, everyone in the Scottish Parliament knows, knows who, who this is. man is. Yeah. And, but again, the Scottish press, I know the laws of contempt are very strong in Scotland mm. and the press are terrified of it, but they seem to be more terrified of the SNP because, I, I mean, if this was happening in England, the press would be all over yeah, it. Yeah. There'd be all kinds of additional information. But the SNP have done a brilliant job at locking this down. This is, this is what you get when you've been in power for 15 years. Absolutely. You People can control. are terrified. You have a great Absolutely. control. Absolutely. And she seems to be still wielding that power. Now, Humza Yousaf, the leader of the SNP and the First Minister, is now um, trying to divert this story. But he promised transparency and a new era for the SNP. We've had none of that. It's simply getting worse and more deeper into the quagmire surrounding this party. Now, the party is in government. It is incredibly serious. Mm -hmm. And it really is about time that Mr Yousaf was called to account properly by the Scottish press. You think as well that she would have been suspended pending the of outcome course. of the investigation? Because that's what happens Absolutely. Often. And she's, she, as leader, was ruthless. She would have chucked any, any of her members who were being investigated she, by the police over the allegedly point is missing got rid money. Of for less. For less, exactly. And they also keep talking about she was released without charges. Well, no charges have been brought yet yes. because the police have not finished their mm. inquiries. So, uh, yes, she, of course, everyone is innocent until proven guilty, but she has been arrested and interviewed as a suspect in a very major crime criminal inquiry. Now, I think that alone, um, if, I, if you had any honour, uh, Nicola Sturgeon would step aside on her own volition. But she hasn't given any uh, sign of doing that. No. Far from it. What she started at the weekend in that interview was the beginning of her defence. This is somebody who's advised politicians who've had their backs to the wall to, many say, times, yeah. which is why he's such an authority, is because I could have lost count of the number of politicians, peers who advise her <laughs> in a lot of trouble about what, what they can and can't say. So what would you have advised her to do that, Piers, to, to go and stand in front of the cameras? No, no. because I, I think she's... I mean, the, the people investigating and the prosecutors, um, it, this will simply um, spur them on. Mm. And I think also mm. she's going to look, if things turn out badly for her, which I fear they will, um, uh, she's going to look very foolish. Mm. I, I mean, she, it's far better to say nothing. Mm. Um, 
the point is she can't stay away. Yes, Once yes, you're in it power, yeah. it's very hard to let your power go. Yeah. And she likes to be at the, in charge, running things. She wants to get back in Parliament, control the rumour mill, make these comments, keep saying I've done nothing wrong, and try and establish the beginning of her defence. That's what she's up to. She's almost in denial. Yes. I mean, Absolutely. wouldn't you forget one of the other two people arrested? Yeah. question for ours was yeah. Peter Murrell, her yeah, husband, her husband yes. chief executive of the S&P since 1988, yeah. who signed off the accounts, which she signed off, and there's the third person with the Treasury mm -hmm. who signed off the accounts. And we've got to remember, it's £666,000, coincidentally the sign of the beast, that is unaccountable for. You don't do but your book it's of a lovely time. I, I do, but I'm surprised you thought about yeah, it that yeah. much. But yeah, it's yeah. a lovely time of year in Scotland. Yeah. And what I would do if I was her is get in a camper van with her husband and go for a nice holiday in the yeah. Trossachs. We'd like to pounds. know where that camper van is, actually. When she, when she disappeared from view uh, after being arrested, I said, find the camper van. Was well, the police you might have find got Nicola it, it. They have got it. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The camper van that was on her 92-year-old mother-in-law's Drive for, yeah. for, uh, yeah. the, for the political yeah. party campaign. Do you think 92-year-old Muslim was driving the, the she camper might have van? She popped out to the trust stocks, as we say. Just one thing, Piers. Yes. I'm fascinated by the fact that Nicola Sturgeon, Boris Johnson, Donald Trump in America, <laughs> all incredibly controversial figures, but they could seemingly can do to their fans, and they are fans, aren't they? Can do no wrong. Up until now, um, the last poll over the weekend showed that Sturgeon's popularity had plummeted since her arrest. The Scots are no fools. Once they smell a rat, they, they don't like it. Mm. And, I mean, uh, her popularity, even though she may be in denial, um, it has vanished. Mm. Mm. There, there was also a poll, it's, OK, it's not of Tory party members, but um, a reference, I think it was in the Sunday Times yesterday, that Boris Johnson is now uh, less popular than Philip Schofield and, um, uh, I think, President Xi of China. That's pretty. Full. That's a pretty big. Who, who do they ask? I've never been asked know, any I of these never, questions. I've in never been asked a question ever by a pollster. No, me but, neither. No, but I mean, Boris, poor chap. I mean, if his opening column in, in I'm afraid, your newspaper. Yes. Right? If, if he's going to write about miracle cure weight losses, um, I would wonder whether the male are paying him uh, I'm sure rather too much. I think he's biding <laughs> his time until he ventures back into I, the political arena. I think there was hidden messages in that column. He was quoting Shakespeare about, yeah. basically, paraphrasing here, folks, uh, about never trusting small, skinny men. Yeah. Um, yes. Is the Prime well, Minister small and be... skinny? Yes. No. Or is it me? Well, possibly. I'm uh, quite I, I, I mean, it might have just been a, a, an honest quote from Shakespeare, but I was reading a lot of messages. This, this is, in that and book. Boris Johnson knows Shakespeare inside out because, of course, he is writing a biography of William Shakespeare, yes, exactly, yeah. which he's supposed to have handed in some years ago, yes, as absolutely. I recall. He can get on with it. Well, maybe his next column will be more illuminating. I'm sure it see. will be. Good plug for the Daily Mail, of course. We're very pleased Absolutely. to have it. I tell you, every paper in Fleet Street wanted that column, didn't they? Uh, yeah, how much are you paying for it? Don't Go know. on. <laughs> oh, Go on. That, no. I, that well, is so Boris, above my Boris pay, was pay, pay rise. Boris was getting 275000 from his previous newspaper for a column. The Daily Telegraph. But he fell out with them badly. Yeah. Or they fell out with him badly. He falls uh, out with a lot of people. Yeah. And I used to deal with his column sometimes. It was always late. And he never wrote what he said he was going to write. Oh. And when you rang him back, the phone was switched off. So but it was know, always beautiful. No, you couldn't change his. You couldn't change your words. Yeah, it was literally because we're both we're both columnists, and yeah, you, you yeah. literally not a word. You can't change yeah. any of it. it